friends, welcome back to my channel. In this video, I wanted to chat a little bit about my journey from being skinny fat in my early 20s to now being slightly more lean and how I maintain it after having two children. Now, first off, I just wanna say that I don't love the term skinny fat, nor do I like commenting on bodies or saying that we need to look a certain way. I am not saying that how I looked before was incorrect. I'm not saying how I look now is correct. I am just telling you about my journey in hopes that maybe I can inspire somebody if they're feeling the way I felt when I was in my early 20s. I also want to say that I'm not a professional, I'm not an expert, but I will provide you tips that worked for me. They may not necessarily work for you, but again, just looking to motivate somebody if they're in a little bit of a funk or if they feel like they need a little bit of a confidence boost. Now, the main reason I'm making this video is because I had someone come up on my Instagram reels saying that Indians or people that generally have a vegetarian diet tend to be skinny fat genetically because they don't have enough protein. Did I believe this in my early 20s? Yes, 100% I believed this. I was always very, very, I don't wanna use the word lean, so I'm gonna use the word thin growing up. And then when my metabolism slowed down and I wasn't as active in university, I definitely saw a massive weight gain. I was still skinny on my arms and on my legs and I carried all my weight in my midsection and I thought that this was just normal and that, hey, this is just genetics, this is the way it's supposed to be, and I'm just gonna roll with it. Now, if you've seen my previous videos, you know that I am a commercial model. So I actually started modeling when I was 14 years old. From 14 to 19, I was modeling pretty heavily in Calgary, and then once I started gaining weight, I actually stopped modeling. I felt, hey, this is, this is it for me, I'm Indian. I wanna talk a little bit about the phases I went through and where I am now with my routine, both with my diet and my workouts. Okay, so backtracking a little bit, my parents were born in Fiji and we are East Indian. But that being said, did grow up having a mainly vegetarian diet. Lots of carbs, lots of vegetables. There's absolutely nothing wrong with this. I'd say the only form of protein we really had growing up would be eggs and chicken, but we didn't really eat any beef or pork. When I started gaining weight in university, about 19 or 20, you know, I remember going on vacation in my early 20s. My poor boyfriend at the time, he would have to keep taking pictures of me when I asked. I didn't look thin enough in one photo or, you know, one angle showed too much. I was very uncomfortable on the beach and I just did not want that for myself anymore. Social media didn't exist. We didn't even have smartphones at this point. A lot of the information I was getting was maybe from just reading, you know, magazines, Cosmopolitan, all those fun magazines you read at that age. And all the magazines talked about was doing cardio, a lot of gym membership. And sure enough, I would go to the gym and hop on the elliptical and do that for an hour. Every day I would look in the mirror and hope that my midsection was shrinking. However, no one was educating me on proper nutrition. I continued to eat just as much as I was eating before, if not more, because I was way hungrier from doing the cardio. At this point, I didn't see any change in my body composition at all. I mean, cardio is great for health. I continue to do cardio for my heart health, but as far as changing my body composition, it did not help. You know, again, at this point, my friends were all super lean and I just thought, hey, this is my genetics. I'm just going to be skinny fat for the rest of my life. Enter phase two. At this point, I had read a little bit about proper nutrition, not so much calories, but fad diets. And one of the fad diets I decided to go on, which is probably the opposite of what I should have done, was going vegan. So I definitely cut out all dairy, all meat, and was eating lots of fruits and vegetables and carbs. And again, continuing with my cardio, but didn't see a change in my body composition. Now at this point, there's no making sure I'm getting enough protein. I was getting barely any protein. And at this point, I decided that I didn't want to cut out dairy, so I switched to a vegetarian diet. Again, still not getting enough protein, still not really tracking my calories, so wasn't noticing a change in my body composition. Now thank goodness, I don't know what inspired me to take a group class at the gym that I had a membership to, but it was a weight training class. It just looked like a lot of fun. It was really busy all the time. So I would take that class and I really fell in love with it. This is my first introduction to using weights and I think I was 21 or 22 at this point. Once I started lifting light weights, started to see a little bit change in my body composition. Also, I moved in with my now husband and he would take protein powder when he worked out. So this was my first introduction to protein powder. I think all women at some point in their life didn't wanna lift weights, didn't wanna eat protein because we were worried about 
bulking. We were worried about looking bulky. We were worried about having huge biceps, huge quads. But my partner at the time recommended I take protein powder after I lifted weights as a way to both recover and also maintain the muscle mass that I was building. As I started doing this, this is when I started noticing the weight around my midsection coming off. It was a very, very slow process because again, I wasn't counting calories. It was just the simple addition of adding weight training to my routine that helped. Then smartphones became a thing and fitness influencers became a thing. And this is when I realized that I should be essentially eating more protein than I was. I switched to a pescatarian diet. So from just having a vegetarian diet, I started adding fish. And to this day, I am pescatarian. Now this is just something that works for me. I also find that fish is a protein for me that's easily digestible. It doesn't cause any type of indigestion or bloating. So that's why I've just stuck with eating fish for the past 10 years. Then I reached my weight training phase where I started lifting heavier and heavier and eating more and more protein. And that's when I saw the biggest change in my body. Of course, I still do cardio. I became a spin instructor in 2016, and I did that for a couple of years until I had my children in 2019 and 2020. Now, the biggest tips I have for maintaining proper nutrition and a good workout routine when having children is to plan. I do meal prep at least one or two of my meals on Sundays. If you've seen some of my previous videos, you know that I eat overnight oats in the morning, and this helps me not reach for different treats that my kids get for breakfast. I also meal prep my lunch. So while my kids are at preschool, I make sure I have a healthy lunch that's high protein. It's usually a salmon, uh, rice, and a vegetable. And then with supper, I just make sure that we're eating healthy and that I fill my plate with a lot of protein so that I'm hitting my daily goals. Now I usually aim for about one gram of protein per pound of body weight. Lately, I've been going a little bit more as I've been lifting heavier to try to see some more changes in my physique. So probably some of the biggest advice I can give to moms that are trying to get on track after having kids is to not go with any fad diets or fad workouts. It has to be a lifestyle change. Otherwise, you'll definitely fall off. Being a mom is so tough. It is so draining and challenging that at the end of the day, it's so easy to skip our workout, grab snacks to really just break out of our routine. That's where you don't wanna be depriving yourself all day because you're really just setting yourself up for failure. It's gotta be a gradual process. I mean, my kids are three and four and I've been working at this since I stopped breastfeeding when they were one year old. Again, eating lots of protein, lots of healthy fats, complex carbs. These are all gonna be game changers for you. But again, I think hitting our protein is key. Try to avoid as much sugar as possible, but again, I'm a mom and I give my kids three healthy meals a day, but they do have snacks that they take to preschool. Make sure that you're not depriving yourself so that you're constantly feeling full and never reaching for that food that's there. Again, it's all about balance. It's a lifestyle. So I go by the 80-20 rule. I try to eat 80%. I plan my meals out as clean as possible and that 20% might just be the you know extra bites of pancakes I might steal off my kids plates now I'll say it again cardio is really important for your heart health but you're gonna see the biggest change in your body composition if you're weight training reaching for weights is going to make the biggest impact on your body composition and the great thing is as you build more muscle you actually increase your metabolism so you can slowly, slowly start eating more and more, which is great. I'm eating constantly. I find that I need to so that I'm not feeling hungry throughout the day. Otherwise, at the end of the day, when I'm half dead and I'm just sitting watching Netflix because I'm so mentally drained, it's so easy for me to grab a bag of chips and just eat the whole thing. The last thing I'll say is consistency is key. It's okay to have days where you fall off. It's okay to have days where I have to go to a kid's birthday party and I'm eating cake and pizza and ice cream. Those days happen as long as you're staying as consistent as possible, as long as you're doing your best and maintaining some type of consistency, you'll definitely see results. And I definitely think my biggest takeaway is just because I'm Indian doesn't mean I'm supposed to be skinny fat. It's all about your nutrition and your weight training. Now, if you have a vegetarian or vegan diet, I think, you know, now that we're in 2024, there's so much information out there for you to be able to hit your protein goals for the day. So this isn't to say that one type of diet is better than another. Obviously, if I wasn't pescatarian and I ate chicken and beef and pork, it might be easier for me 
to hit my protein goals throughout the day, but I found what works for me eating various types of fish throughout the day. And if you're vegetarian or vegan, uh, just by choice or because of your culture, then you still have many different ways that you can hit your protein. I really appreciate you watching this video. I know it can be a little bit of an uncomfortable topic for some. Definitely showed a little bit of my vulnerable side here, especially sharing these older pictures of myself. But again, if I can just help or inspire somebody and tell people that just because you're Indian doesn't mean genetically you're supposed to look a certain way, then I feel like that's the best thing that could happen here. If you have any questions or comments about my journey, feel free to drop them below. Be sure to like and subscribe. And I, again, appreciate you so much for being here. Thanks and bye for now.